Hey guys, happy Friday. So for the Q&A today, I actually am going to continue last week's Q&A about some of the differences between benzoyl peroxide and salicylic acid. When I filmed that video, I talked for a very, very long time. But what I said, I think is actually useful. So rather than making it one hour long video, I decided to break it up into two. So in last week's video, I talked about the differences between benzoyl peroxide and salicylic acid as far as treating acne and also some of the other diseases that each ingredient is useful for. So check that out. I'll link it down below and it'll be a pop-up card if I remember. But in today's video, I'm going to answer your questions about benzoyl peroxide. Does that age your skin? And also talk a little bit about pregnancy category, which ones may or may not be safe during pregnancy and breastfeeding. Talk about that. And I'm also going to talk a little bit about how to use each of the ingredients, kind of some of the questions that you ask me about applying them. So I hope this is helpful to you with that. Some common questions you guys ask me though about each of these, some of these ingredients. Does benzoyl peroxide age our skin? You mentioned that it works by oxidizing the proteins on the surface of the bacteria in our skin, but if it's oxidizing things, can't that age our skin? And that is a great question you guys ask me about. And my you know, inclination as a dermatologist is to say no, because we actually know that people with acne who use benzoyl peroxide, but people with acne in general, they actually have uh, almost a, a less age, they've been shown to have less, a, to, to age better, <laughs> to, to age better, their skin ages better than people without acne. And they're using benzoyl peroxide all the time. So, you know, in real world use, it doesn't seem to be the case. But there was a study that looked at this in the laboratory and they looked at, um, they compared benzoyl, applying repeatedly benzoyl peroxide at a few different concentrations, 0.1%, 1.5% and 5%. And they compared that to, um, uh, to cumulative fluences of UVB radiation. So UVB is a part of the sun that burns our skin and ages it quite a bit. Um, so they looked at either the benzoyl peroxide or the UVB, or they looked at them together. This was done in mouse models, so not human skin. Um, and it's not surprising that UVB at increasing fluences resulted in kind of some things related to photo aging and, and skin damage sunburn cells, um, increased uh, skin fold thickness, and increased uh, what's called mast cells that come in when the, sun is when the sun damages our skin. So those were all up when they exposed the skin to UVB. Benzoyl peroxide exposure um, didn't really do those things, but it did result in an increase in epidermal and dermal thickness as would be expected with UVB exposure but to a much less extent than, than UVB did. So it wasn't as bad as UVB. But this effect was not concentration dependent. They did show a, constant, a benzoyl peroxide concentration dependent increase in elastin content in the mouse model skin. Um, so that was one thing that seemed to correlate with increasing concentrations of benzoyl peroxide. But importantly, there was no synergy uh, with benzoyl peroxide and UVB. By synergy, I mean the um, effects of uh, UV damage were not uh, exacerbated or raised in the presence of benzoyl peroxide. There are some other studies though in mouse models that have shown that um, that uh, there is some synergy with benzoyl peroxide and UVA. That's that other component of ultraviolet radiation that comes from the sun. It doesn't burn our skin so much, but it does destroy our collagen. And that study in the mouse model did show that. But these are mouse studies, very small. And you know we don't really have the human data to say that for sure, but you know it's a valid concern and a valid issue. What I would tell you that's very important, I mean, I tell you guys this anyway, regardless of what I'm talking about, use sunscreen, use sun protection. Gonna be very important when you're using both benzoyl peroxide and salicylic acid, even though this, this theoretical risk of aging 
has not been shown with salicylic acid. And in fact, salicylic acid is one that you would think more of as an anti-aging ingredient. Regardless, both, you need to have sun protection because they do thin some of that stratum corneum, the top, top layer of the skin. And that's great, that's, you know, that's a good thing, but it allows a little bit more ultraviolet radiation to get into your skin. So you really need to be extra vigilant with your sun protection, but you should be extra vigilant regardless of what you do, so. There you have it. But do wear do do wear your sun protection and you know, thank you guys for asking that question. I never would have found this study had you not asked that because I never really thought about it. Another common question I get is, well, does the skin get used to either ingredients, salicylic acid or benzoyl peroxide? No, it does not. Um, you know, your skin turns over and the salicylic acid will continue to work. Benzoyl peroxide will continue to work. Again, as I said, a, a real strength of benzoyl peroxide is that the bacteria on your skin, which it's fighting against, don't become resistant to it for whatever reason, the, the acute bacterium acne. So it will continue to work and continue to, it will continue to function and do its thing. However, acne or whatever other disease that you happen to be treating with that happens to be treated with one of these ingredients those conditions they can get worse uh, on their own even in the face of treatment so for example acne can be under good control with benzoyl peroxide or salicylic acid and then some other factor enters into the individual's life that leads to triggering or flaring of the acne and they they flare through the salicylic acid or through the benzoyl peroxide and at that time it's it's time for another agent or addressing whatever it is that's flaring the acne or you know some other skin disease like hyperpigmentation uh, you know it's a, the hyperpigmentation comes back it's cuz you know, there was more inflammation in the skin or whatever caused the initial hyperpigmentation initially, but it's not because the salicylic acid suddenly stop working. All right, questions that I'm always resistant to answer. In fact, sometimes you guys ask these questions and I just don't answer you because I don't want to be misleading. And that is always related, you guys ask a lot, is this safe in pregnancy or is this safe in breastfeeding? And I'm always resistant to answer this for a lot of ingredients because as in, the, as in the case of both benzoyl peroxide and salicylic acid, the FDA classifies these ingredients as used with caution in pregnancy. And so that means different things for different people, uh, you know, and, and different situations and different formulations in different locations. And there's no way I know that. So it's not gonna be safe or reasonable or right for me to ever answer anybody, yes, this is safe for you to use in pregnancy because I have no way of knowing that and it's just not responsible for me to do. So sometimes I just don't answer you guys when you ask me about, uh, about if something is pregnancy safe or not because it's usually in this category of, uh, you know, take on a case by case basis. But I will tell you this, uh, um, benzoyl peroxide, you know, it's, uh, systemic absorption into the body is minimal. It's rapidly converted to benzoic acid once you put it on the skin, and that's found in food. I mean, you're ingesting that all the time. We don't have any um, studies or any information on reproductive outcomes uh, being affected by benzoyl peroxide. So I'll tell you that, uh, you know, in general, mo many dermatologists generally regard it as safe and don't have a problem with the patient, their patients using it. But again, it's a case by case basis, provider dependent basis. Uh, salicylic acid, um, also, you know, used with caution um, and discretion. Um, in the late, tri uh, thir in the third trimester, towards the end, theoretically, depending on how the percentage that you're using and the surface area you're applying it to, uh, salicylic acid can interfere with uh, the baby's, uh, uh, what's called the ductus arteriosus. This is part of how babies breathe in, in water, basically, in, in the womb. And right, right when they come out and they take their first breath, that closes up and they start, you know, having normal heart and lung physiology. But they have a special setup while they're while they're in in the womb, and that setup needs to stay intact. Unfortunately, uh, salicylic acid at very high percentages could potentially cause that little little um, it's called a ductus arteriosus potentially can cause that to close prematurely. Um, that being said though, you know, I mean, if it's like, this is a, a devil's in the details kind of thing. It depends again on the surface area and the concentration. Again though, it's gonna be a case by case basis. Lactation or breastfeeding, are either of these ingredients safe during breastfeeding? We really don't have lactation data on either ingredient in breastfeeding, but given that benzoyl peroxide is absorbed at such a low level, it's probably fine. 
However, of course, it's prudent not to put it onto your breast area if you're treating, say, for example, hideradenitis suppurativa breakouts on the breast. Uh, you want to make sure that it's been washed off of the skin before you breastfeed. You don't want the baby to ingest that. Uh, salicylic acid, again, we don't have lactation data on salicylic acid. Um, and again, you wouldn't want to put it on the skin of the breast and then have the baby breastfeed um, and consume it because uh, the baby can uh, develop what's called uh, salicylate poisoning, and that's not good. Uh, that is That would not be good. Uh, they absorb high amounts of, of salicylic acid. And for a baby, high amounts is not very much. You definitely want to, to be cautious with that. Yes, salicylates like aspirin, they definitely can cause toxicity. Uh, and one of the first signs of that is going to be uh, ringing in your ears, nausea. Um, and also sometimes you'll notice that your breathing is, you're hyperventilating. Those are signs of poisoning from, from salicylates. Very rare with salicylic acid and topical products, but it definitely can occur. Uh, if you again, if you're putting on a very high air surface area, a very high percentage strength, it's been reported in people using oral uh, salicylic acid for some teeth whitening purposes. So it's definitely a, a potential risk. So that's why I bring it up. All right, and then lastly, everybody always wants to know how do I layer one ingredient with another ingredient, and combine it with everything else under the sun? I, you know, in general try and resist the temptation to, you know, go Mad Max on your skin with all these different combinations. I don't even know, why, why did I say Mad Max? I don't know, I must be getting a little drowsy here. Um, so, you know, anytime you combine ingredients that are inherently irritating to the skin with other ingredients that are inherently irritating to the skin, you're just increasing the chances of irritation. And in the case of acne, remember I told you inflammation is a key part of what drives acne, it's there from the get-go. So the last thing you wanna be doing is to be causing too much irritation and inflammation in your skin by mambo comboing seven or you know 20 different things. But that being said, you know uh, your dermatologist probably is gonna advise you to use a couple of different ingredients and they'll tell you a specific routine to combine them with. But generally speaking, uh, some contraindications or some combinations of ingredients that interact. Dapsone, I have a video on this, it also goes by the name Axone. If you put Dapsone on and this, at the same time you put benzoyl peroxide on, it can yellow your skin, so we don't recommend doing that. Also, hydroquinone, if you're using it for, for treating hyperpigmentation and you're also using benzoyl peroxide at the same time, those two can be super irritating. So that's a combination that is not very good. If you are taking Accutane by mouth, benzoyl peroxide is typically one of the first things we tell you to stop when you start taking Accutane because Accutane or isotretinoin is the, uh, is the name of the drug. I have a video on this, by the way. Isotretinoin is going to cause your skin to be incredibly dry and peeling. Benzoyl peroxide does that. Last thing you want is to be putting benzoyl peroxide on that dry peeling Accutane skin. So that's usually something that gets stopped. Um, and, but it's not as though they're, they, you know, they cancel each other out. It just makes your life a living nightmare and there's no need for that. Um, all right, the one ingredient though that you can't use it alongside uh, at the same time, I will say, is tretinoin. Uh, we know benzoyl peroxide degrades tretinoin, so you don't wanna apply benzoyl peroxide and tretinoin at the same time. Uh, that being said, you know, your dermatologist might give you a routine that involves using a benzoyl peroxide wash at some point in the week or daily or whatnot. Um, and that's, that's do, done because it can help in the uptake of the tretinoin. Uh, so we can get better, tretinoin can penetrate better because the benzoyl peroxide will be doing that exfoliating and whatnot. It'll give a little anti-inflammatory effect and then tretinoin can sink on in afterwards. So that's something that you know might be prescribed, but only in the right situation. Some patients won't tolerate those two ingredients in the same, you know, in, as part of their there are routines. It's just too much irritation on irritation. They may just choose to stick with one active ingredient in the beginning. Um, so it's very nuanced, in other words. Adapalene, on the other hand, does not is not, adapalene is different. Adapalene is stable in the presence of benzoyl peroxide. The other one that you can't combine with, although it's probably not going to apply to you, but it might. Uh, you know, you should advise. I guess you should call. You should make your doctor aware of it that you're using benzoyl peroxide because if your doctor uses a topical anesthetic, say for a procedure, or you know your healthcare provider uses a topical anesthetic, they're going to numb your skin with something. They're going to do a procedure. 
If you've got benzoyl peroxide on the surface of the skin at the time they're trying to put that topical anesthetic on, the benzoyl peroxide can reduce the efficacy of the topical anesthetic. And so they'll put it on and you'll still feel something. And they're like, why did she feel that? All they have to do is wipe it off of your skin and then they can put it on. So that's something to be aware of. Uh, you know, should you need to be, should you find yourself in a situation where you have to, you know, use a topical anesthetic. So salicylic acid doesn't necessarily degrade any ingredient or interfere with it, at least that I'm aware of or that's been shown. Uh, but we, you know, generally tell patients not to combine it with retinoids or at least in the same routine to put them on, you know, simultaneously because it is just adding the risk of irritation to have those two together. And again, it does stay behind in the pore. So, uh, you know, that is something that is something to think of. But we do use it alongside, you know, other active ingredients all the time. Um, but if you happen to be uh, going through what's called narrowband UVB treatment or phototherapy for your psoriasis and you're using salicylic acid, you shouldn't put it on before the, um, before the phototherapy because it can block the, um, the UVB to a certain extent and reduce the dose, the, the amount that you're getting into the psoriasis lesions. So that's you know kind of a psoriasis specific thing. Or if you're undergoing phototherapy for some other condition, be aware of that, that that you know, could potentially affect, affect the, the outcomes of your phototherapy treatment. Aside from using these ingredients in dedicated washes, like a benzoyl peroxide wash or salicylic acid wash, you don't wanna put these ingredients onto your skin when it's wet. That will definitely increase irritation and get you nowhere. This is why I hate that adage, thinnest to thickest, when it comes to putting your skincare products on, because uh, you know, very liquid, uh, liquidy salicylic acid leave-on products. Last thing you want to do is put those on wet skin first. Um, you want to put your moisture, like a lightweight moisturizer, on after you've cleansed. Allow the moisturizer to dry and then put on the leave-on product. Doing it that way will definitely lower the irritation and it won't interfere with, with how the drugs get into the skin um, at all. Especially if you use a, a lightweight lotion. I'll list some down below in the description box for you guys. But no, that doesn't cause any issue for people. But I will say in comparing salicylic acid and benzoyl peroxide, we can just go up the irritation ladder. Probably the least irritating is going to be a salicylic acid face wash. Then next in line is going to be a salicylic acid mask, meaning something that you leave on the skin for a short contact time and then rinse off. Then third is going to be your salicylic acid leave-on products, whether they be lotions um, or spot treatments, toners. Uh, then next in line, as far as irritation, is gonna be a benzoyl peroxide wash. And then after that, it's going to be a benzoyl peroxide mask and then a benzoyl peroxide leave-on product. So benzoyl peroxide spot treatments, they work really well if you've got an uh, inflamed lesion of acne, but you'll notice they're incredibly irritating and drying. Uh, the next morning, it's like dried out and, and really, really flaky. Uh, that's the benz what benzoyl peroxide, just incredibly irritating. Concentrations are less of an issue when it comes to acne, at least, uh, because we know that lower concentrations of benzoyl peroxide and salicylic acid even still exert good acne control and help acne and, and oftentimes to the same extent as, as higher concentrations but with less irritation. So, you know, again, it's the devil's in the details with working with your provider to figure out which dosage, which concentration is right for you. But with benzoyl peroxide, we, you know, we know at least that the 2.5% that's sold over the counter is as effective at clearing acne as like 10%, but less irritating. And salicylic acid at low percentages that you can find over the counter, like 1%, does help acne as well. So, you know, I wouldn't worry so much about the percentage strengths. I would work that out with your treating healthcare provider um, in terms of what's going to be best for you. So yeah, that's the q and I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.